the uh, Euro Eurozone fell a little bit less than the U.S. in the first quarter, fell a little bit more in the second quarter. I'm talking about GDP. Tell us where you think the uh, Eurozone is right now when it comes to recovery and where you think it's going. So I think uh, what we're seeing over the summer uh, is that it's more or less in line with our baseline uh, projections. So in our baseline, uh, like everywhere, uh, quarter two was going to be the, the worst quarter. But by the way, within quarter two, uh, the worst month would have been April. So we've had a, you know, a very deep fall in output, but also week by week, um, the recovery is uh, happening. But I suppose let me emphasize is uh, there's still a long way to go. So in terms of growth rates, we, we think quarter three is going to be uh, quite a strong growth rate, but, but the growth rate doesn't mean so much in, in this world uh, where you follow a, a quor two quarters of, of uh, very negative performance. It's going to take a number of quarters of positive performance uh, to, to, to get back to where we were. So I think uh, there's nothing, uh, I mean, our baseline was built around uh, once the economy is unlocked, that there would be a recovery. But the reality is, uh, you know, while we still have to manage this virus in terms of uh, uh, social distancing, other restrictions, there's not going to be a return to, to normal levels of economic activity for, for a considerable period. Philip, there was a, a good spurt of growth that you had. The numbers were actually outperforming uh, earlier this summer. Now you've had a bit of a return of the virus um, are you starting to be more pessimistic about what's going to happen in the fall? Well, I think our baseline was based on essentially a concept of a, of a bumpiness, that we would have zigs and zags, that there, it was not going to be the case that um, the dynamic of managing the, the, the pandemic would be uh, perfectly linear where uh, progress is, is, is made and maintained. Uh, you know, I think... It, the, the study of past uh, pandemics it is that essentially you're going to have uh, localized outbreaks uh, recurrently. And, you know, the big challenge now is to make sure when we see these outbreaks uh, that they, 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 they're dealt with promptly uh, in as, as localized a manner as makes sense in order to avoid, uh, you know, a generalized lockdown. So, you know, it remains, you know, Phil we do think... Um, uh, that this is, the, you know, uh, what we expected. Um, but of course, um, the, the, the more the authorities can really make sure that the, the virus is contained uh, uh, as much as possible. I mean, that's the most important uh, policy objective for the economy. Philip, uh, just, just two more questions here. Um, <clears throat> is the European Central Bank prepared to do more? And if so, what more could it do? It's already created a very large uh, loan fund and 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 uh, already is at negative interest rates. Uh, is there more in the ECB's arsenal? Does it uh, is it prepared to use it? You know, we we signaled all along that we're, we're basically absolutely stand ready as needed. You know, so you know we we've made a, a lot of policy moves between March and June, and uh, we we stand ready to do more as needed. And I think uh, what you maybe uh, have come to learn in these months is uh, central banks have a lot of capability. Central banks, uh, even in this world where interest rates are low or negative, uh, th there's a lot we can do. So, you know, this is not to say the central banks can, uh, you know, solve all the problems. We have a very limited role, uh, really, compared to fiscal policy in this environment. Uh, but within our, within our mandate, within our remit, I, w I would not be concerned about um, uh, the, the uh, room for action. Uh, we can definitely step up as needed.